the drivetrain of a truck. So this is called a bogey. The bogey on the boxcar. And uh, there's an axle under here. Did I do a torsion test on the axle? Here's the other side of the bogey. See the axle under there? Take a look at the drive shaft on this Bell Cobra helicopter. The drive shaft on an aircraft engine propeller, like you see in this picture. So the specimen that I propose using in this particular lab activity, it's a circular cross section. Uh, the diameter, D, uh, 3 fourth of an inch, or 0.75. Uh, the modulus of elasticity, E, uh, and I'm not sure about this, but uh, just for the sake of argument, let's say that's 30,000 kips per square inch, which is the same thing as saying 30 times 10 to the 6th, pounds per square inch. So we'll assume that that is the modulus of elasticity for this steel, although uh, it could be some other value. There is a, a range that uh, is applicable for steel, a range of possible moduli of elasticity, but we'll assume it's 30,000 uh, kips per square inch. Uh, the length of the specimen, 16 inches. And uh, one more thing, uh, do you know what Poisson's ratio is? Poisson's ratio. Let me go off on a tangent here for a moment. I imagine that I've got this cube. I'll try to draw this in three dimensions. I've got this cube and I subject it to a tension force. So I'm going to pull on it like I did in lab number one with that steel coupon. So imagine that I pull on it. Here P for pulling. As I pull on this thing, uh, there'll be a certain strain in the vertical direction, right? Before I go any further, let me put some axes here, some coordinate axes. So up and down will be Z. Up and down will be Z. I'll say that left and right is X. Uh, in and out of the screen will be Y. So X, Y, and Z. Okay, so I'm pulling in the Z direction, aren't I? So when I pull on this uh, little rectangular box, I know that there'll be a strain in the Z direction, but it's also going to get skinnier in both the X and the Y directions, won't it? Won't it get skinnier? So a Poisson's ratio. Uh, it, uh, it quantifies this relationship between the longitudinal strain and uh, the strain in the X and the Y direction. So the formula, uh, we use the Greek letter nu for Poisson's ratio. I can say that that is negative epsilon sub x divided by epsilon sub z, which is equal to negative epsilon sub y over epsilon sub z. Uh, so that would be Poisson's ratio. The strain in the x direction divided by strain in the z direction, or strain in the y direction divided by strain in the z direction. So for this particular specimen, I will assume that Poisson's ratio is 0.25. I'm not sure about that, but that's a convenient value to assume for Poisson's ratio. So here's the circular specimen. Uh, we're going to have two strain gauges on this specimen. So imagine one strain gauge like this. So this will be one of the strain gauges. You see it here in red, kind of sloppy, but I've got one strain gauge uh, that is aligned at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to the longitudinal axis. So this angle right here, I'm going to say that's 45 degrees. 45 degrees. What's special about 45 degrees? Uh, that's one of the principal directions. One of the principal directions. There'll be a second strain gauge that's perpendicular to this one. So the second strain gauge, uh, I'm going to say, is like this. That's perpendicular to the red one. 
also at an angle of 45 degrees. So this angle, 45 degrees. Hope you can read this. So I've got these two strain gauges glued onto the specimen that are in the principal directions, that is 45 degrees from the longitudinal axis. So I'm going to have one strain indicator box reading both these gauges at once, since we know that the strains are equal in both these directions. So it's just a matter of taking the reading from the strain indicator box and dividing it by two. The torsion testing machine. Here we have the loading dial. I turn that to apply load to the specimen. A stop button, if I want to load, I press the load button first. If I want to unload, I press stop and then I press the unload button. The loading gauge, it tells how much load is being applied to the specimen at any one time. And here we keep some wrenches. Some wrenches we use to insert the specimen. So this is the specimen right here. Uh, you see the strain gauge is glued on there. Uh, the specimen is already in the machine. So I'm going to do a torsion test on this, on this specimen. So uh, let's get a big picture here. And uh, here is the strain indicator box that uh, we've been using for our previous activities. So I want to show you a close-up of some of these parts. Uh, this is the on-off lever on the side. Okay, it's our real torsion testing machine. Uh, it looks like it was last calibrated in 1999. What does that say? December 2nd, 99? Uh, maybe before some of you were born. Uh, something I didn't mention earlier, this is called the range selector. The machine is turned off now, so I can play with this a little bit. I had it set at number four. Uh, if I set it to number four, that means that the maximum capacity is a thousand. I don't know if you can see that in the little window there, a thousand. So this is a thousand as I work my way around. Fifty, one hundred, one fifty, that one fifty. Uh, 200, 250. Remember how I said that the 3 o'clock position was 250? The 3 o'clock position was 250. The 6 o'clock position was 500, etc. If I change this to some other setting, uh, let's say 5, for example. Switch that to 5. What does that do? There we go. So what does that do exactly? Uh, notice that the little numbers in the window changed now. So 25, the maximum is now 500 pound inches. It was 1,000 with that other setting. The three o'clock position is no longer 250, it's 125. The six o'clock position is now 250. So you see these, these are like little windows where the values change depending on what range I'm selecting. So today we were using number four. Sometimes this sticks. Okay, what are some of these other ranges? Is one the maximum? One is the maximum. So if I set it to one, I can get as much as 10,000 pound inches out of this machine. The three o'clock position would be 2,500. The six o'clock position would be 5,000. So uh, this machine has some level of versatility. So I'm gonna switch this back to four because that's uh, the setting that we use for this particular lab activity. So the loading dial, load, stop, unload, the specimen with the strain gauges on it. Here's the electric motor. I could take the specimen out, but uh, I'll leave it in there for the next guy. Uh, if I were to take the specimen out, uh, this this electric motor slides back and forth. You see the rail here? There's a rail on this side and a rail on this side. I can slide the electric motor back and forth uh, so as to fit in a longer or a shorter specimen. Our strain indicator box. What have I been doing during this activity? Okay, what do I do here? Maybe I haven't showed you a close-up of this before. Okay, you can see how I plugged in the strain gauge wires. So here is the strain gauge. There's actually two strain gauges on there. 
the wires coming out of the strain gauges. Follow this up, plug it into the two arm Wheatstone bridge, bridge selector on two arm. Uh, when I was talking about centering the needle, okay, maybe I haven't showed this to you previously, but you see that little black needle in there? You might not see it move unless it's turned on. So turn it on. So you see, see that little black needle moving in there? So as that little black needle moves, uh, so does the reading here in the measurement window. Now it says 3850. Okay, so when a load is applied to the specimen, when a load is applied to the specimen, the little black needle might not be centered in the balancing meter. See, the little black needle isn't centered, is it? So when I want to take a strain reading, I need to center that little black needle by adjusting this strain measurement wheel on the side. See this? So by turning that, I can get the little black needle centered like so. Once the little black needle is centered, then I can take my strain reading. So that's where I was getting those numbers that I was calling out to you. So that is our strain indicator box, our BLH strain indicator box. So uh, following my checklist, I turn the machine on. So there's a lever on the left hand side that I use to turn the machine on. I've already turned it on. Uh, it lights up. Uh, what I have here is the a load needle. Let's see this needle that I'm turning manually. Uh, that's uh, what I like to call a dummy needle because I can set it uh, to uh, whatever my first stop will be as I load this. So uh, for today's activity, I think I need to take it up to 250. So this is zero, this is 250, 500, 750, 1000. Okay, so 250 is what I'll set it at right now. That's the three o'clock position. Can you see this? Okay. Uh, this needle that's in the 12 o'clock position, that tells how much load is uh, applied to the specimen at any one time. Okay, so I've got my machine checklist here. I turn on the machine, that's what I just did. I have to turn on the strain indicator box. So I'll go around the back side of the camera here. But I should probably plug it in first. So I'm plugging this into the two arm bridge. Black to black, white to white, green to green. Okay, everything plugged in, and I'll turn it on. Okay, I'm centering the needle. Centering the, the needle there in the balancing meter. I have a reading of 3790. I better get a pen for this. Now this is a non-destructive test, so I'm not going to take a close-up of the specimen while this test is being performed because uh, nothing really interesting is going to happen. It'll deform a little bit, but not enough to really be interesting. Okay, so strain recorder box, I turned it on. Uh, centered the needle, got that. Write down the value that I get there. So let me get out my data chart. So that will be my date I'm reading. 3790. Okay. And then going down my checklist, it says press the load button. Before I even do that, let me make sure. Oops, I didn't want to cross in front of the camera. Pardon me. So I'm going to use these wrenches to make sure that the specimen is in there nice and tight. Hang on just a minute. See that this needle moves when I manually apply torsion. Okay, so I, I am confident that it's in there nice and firm. So put the wrenches back in. Okay. So taking my checklist. Okay, so what does it say here? Center the needle. Uh, for the zero reading, I think I just did that. So what did I get? 3790? Let me make sure I didn't mess with that too much. Uh, since I tighten it manually, still 3790. Okay, that's good. Oops, cross in front of the camera again. So uh, the next item on the checklist, press the load button. This is load. Uh, I don't hear any sound. I will when I turn the loading dial. So I'm going to turn the loading dial clockwise until this needle moves to the 3 o'clock position. And now I hear something.
takes a moment to warm up. There it goes. Oop, I overshot. How do I fix that? Press stop, press unload, and when I turn the loading dial clockwise, it'll go back to 250. That's the three o'clock position. I hope you can see this from where you're sitting. Okay, sorry, my head's gonna be in the way. Maybe I want to load it again, so stop and then load. I want to nail it exactly at 250. And back off a little bit. Okay, so I'm satisfied that that is 250. Uh, the, the needle has now moved. The little black needle has moved, so I have to Turn the strain measurement wheel until it gets back in the middle. Okay. I'm getting 4095. Okay, so the next stop, 500, that's a six o'clock position. So the load light is on. That means when I turn the loading dial, uh, the needle will move from the three o'clock position to the six o'clock position. I want it to be at the six o'clock position, so I'm gonna keep the uh, loading dial turned until I get to the six o'clock position. You see it moving? Close enough for government work. Bleeding off a little bit here. Loosening up a bit. Let me tighten it. Okay. Stay. Okay, I think that's good enough. Now we're not going to send this data to NASA, so I'm not looking for perfection. Okay, another strain reading. Uh, four, three, four, zero. Uh, load light is on. So next stop, 750, that'll be right here. The nine o'clock position. Okay. Okay, 750. Okay, take another strain reading. Uh, I'm reading 4600. Okay, so the 12 o'clock position, that's a thousand. That's as high as we're going to take the specimen today. Okay, so the load light is on, so when I turn this, when I turn the loading dial, I'll eventually get to the 12 o'clock position, that's a thousand. I don't want to overshoot, otherwise the machine shuts down. Move this out of the way. Okay, a thousand. Uh, I don't want to overshoot because if I overshoot, uh, the machine just cocks out. Uh, I don't want that to happen. So a thousand, okay. Uh, let's say that's uh, 4860. 4860. 
Okay, now I want to take load readings back on the way down. So uh, my stops on the way up were 0, 250, 500, 750, 1,000. So now I want to take readings on the way back down. So how do I unload this thing? Press stop. Uh, the little yellow light above the stop button is on. Press unload, like that. So the next stop will be the 9 o'clock position. I'm going back now. So I still turn the loading dial in the clockwise direction. Okay, so now we are unloading. And I went a little bit too far. So load back to 750. Very good. Okay, stop. Okay, 750. I'm at 750 right now. So let me take a strain reading. Four, five, nine, or five. 500 pound inches just here at the six o'clock position. Okay, so uh, the unload light is on. My head in the way. Okay, 500. Take a strain reading. So, okay. I'm reading 4330. 250, that is the 3 o'clock position. Unload light is on. I like this machine, it's very simple to use. This antique machine is very simple to use. Two fifty, that's two fifty. Okay. Take another strain reading. Call it 4080. Okay, take it back down to zero. That's back to the 12 o'clock position. Forgot to check. Is the unload button, uh, unload light turned on? It is. Uh, so this is an electrically controlled machine run by electricity, not hydraulics. It's an electrically controlled torsion testing machine. Getting to zero exactly is kind of a challenge in this thing. It doesn't quite want to go all the way. Be as close as I can get. Okay. Uh, so what I'm reading here, uh, two inch pounds per tick mark. So one, two, three. Uh, we're actually at six pound inches. That's pretty close to zero because uh, well you can't see it from where you're sitting, but I'm three tick marks above zero. It looks like uh, I can't get any better than that. So this is actually six pound inches. We'll call it zero. Good enough for government work. Yeah, I'll write down six. Uh, so six pound inches. Let me get a screen reading for this. Uh, Thirty-seven eighty-five. Stop button when I'm done with everything. 
and I can shut it down. So how do I do that? The lever on the left hand side and you'll see the light turn on. And then turn off the strain indicator like so. So there you have it. That was the torsion test, a non-destructive test. I applied a torsional load to the specimen. 